to hockey. Maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. Kaido was being more literal rather than figure of speech in chapter 1047 when he told Monkey D. Luffy, Miss Wing. Roger didn't have any fruit powers because only hockey can transcend all. This is crazy, man. When you think about it, what hockey could achieve in the story after we got the end of chapter 1122? Kaido could have been a lot more literal. It wasn't a figure of speech when he said what he said. He was being real. This is real. No how Slytherin lies here, just straight Gryffindor facts. When we see Joy Boy's hockey do what it did at the end of chapter 1122, seeing the end results of that in 1123, this changes the game. And I think Oda's taking core concepts of other hockey types, and he's actually applying it to this level of conquerors hockey. You can, let's say, call it the transcendence conquerors hockey or transcendence hockey. Woo! A play on Kaido's transcend all things. Transcendence hockey, a hockey that's just too damn strong. So let's deep dive here into this because Oda has, I think, set up what could be the most powerful ability in the story. Let's say outside of Gear 5 and Blackbeard's Yami Yami no Me. Let's dive head first into this. Like this sounds nuts, but what we're talking about here to just completely negate immortality. Yo, just think about that for a second. Think negating immortality. It doesn't matter if you're an immortal, you have everlasting life, or you have everlasting youth and absurd high speed regeneration. That doesn't matter transcend all it's literal all mm. so before we go into the future let's go into the past because we got to talk about chapter 597 when rayleigh first showed luffy all three hockey types but before we get to the rayleigh class if you enjoy your boys content at large hit this video with a simple thumbs up much love now with joy boys hockey that we saw obviously the most important one here is conquerors where Rayleigh explains that Conqueror Saki, after he knocks out this giant elephant, he says this, and I quote, the official Viz translation. This is the power to overwhelm the color of the Supreme King. Most people who've made a name for themselves in this world possess this power. Though you can't control the color of the Supreme King, you cannot train it to be stronger directly. It is the embodiment of the spirit of the user. The only way to make it stronger is for the user to grow stronger. And at the end of 1122, after a meth pulls the sailor's knot and we see this insane conquerors hockey wave, we have this flashback of a meth thinking about Joy Boy. And Joy Boy says in the Viz translation, I've tied a knot of the greatest hockey and locked it inside your body. This does seem a bit different than the scan versions because in this version, it kind of implies that there's a hockey type that is the greatest. And since we see it be Conqueror's Hockey, are we saying, okay, well, Conqueror's Hockey is the best hockey, or this is even the strongest type within Conqueror's Hockey itself. So it's the greatest of the greatest. Conqueror's Hockey is the best hockey, one. And then two, this is the strongest version of Conqueror's Hockey available. That is unclear because like, for example, you can argue that the voice of all things could be the greatest hockey type. Luffy was using that to telepathically talk to Momonosuke when he was under the sea and Law's crew who was nearby and the submarine could hear Luffy speak. And that could possibly fall in the paradigm of hockey too. And we even see the elders, the Gorosei, they're able to talk to each other telepathically on a regular basis. So there's things that need answer for sure. Hockey is still a very vague system in many ways, but we are getting more answers here. And what we've learned from this chapter, essentially, that was hinted at previously at the end of Wano Country, but confirmed in this chapter, I'd argue, is that Conqueror's Hockey has the ability to overwhelm and stop the functionality of other abilities wholesale, completely. Even when, hold on, I should realize that, hold on, let me, uh, there it is. 
even if it's other hockey types. This is a very important thing. This is why you argue that Conqueror's hockey is the best hockey, because you even apply its shutdown functionality to other hockey types. Let's go back again to Rayleigh's words here. But before Conqueror's hockey, when he talked about armament hockey, it's an armor that can be used as a weapon. This is the most effective part of this power. Other than attacking their weak points, this color of arms hockey is the only countermeasure effective against Double Fruit users. Those Logia types with their fluid bodies may seem practically invisible to you, but even they are vulnerable to this power. So Hockey already has some degree of ability negation through Armament Hockey. The invisible armor aura of Armament Hockey allows someone to, in some sense, negate the abilities of a Double Fruit user and actually hit their real body. So even though they have physical enhancements, let's say through the gum gum fruit or your logia, or let's say you're like Katakuri or Mochi, it doesn't really matter because if you have strong enough arm hockey, you can do damage to the quote unquote real body, the soul, the life force, I wanna call it, of the individual. But notice how when we first see a uh, Conqueror's Hockey Infusion, from Luffy, he notes to how you can actually call yourself with Conqueror's Hockey too. So there seems to be, in this sense here, a synergy between Conqueror's Hockey and Armin Hockey, where you can coat your body with both Armin and Conqueror's Hockey, and then we see those sort of like thicker black bolts on the sword, on the fist, on the attack itself. Let's say example, Garp's Galaxy Impact. So in principle, you could argue that when someone is applying both armor hockey and conqueror's hockey, it's not just for, let's say, added defense and offense, though that is a part of it too. They're amplifying exponentially the ability to negate ability. And if we take Kaido's words at face value, it's abilities across the entire spectrum with the Dove Fruits, potentially technology, and other hockey types. Now, it's canon as far as I understand it, it is written by a true Oda himself, the Goda, and that is volume 4 billion. The special volume that came with film Red. And this is important here because we do get the first sense of Conqueror's Hockey being able to negate other hockey types completely. And I quote from volume 4 billion, Shanks is known as the killer of observation hockey. He can kill or control one's breath and he doesn't let his opponents see future sights. Shanks' Conqueror's Hockey is very powerful. And in the One Piece Wiki, it's actually one of the few, if not the only technique for Conqueror's Hockey, the ability of observation killing. So this is an, it's an insane proposition on what Conqueror's Hockey could do, where even if you are proficient, very proficient at observation hockey, let's say Katakuri, let's say NL, Let's say Rayleigh himself. If someone's Conqueror's Hockey is strong enough, it doesn't matter if you can see the future, you can't see their future. Cause they neg your future sight. That's insanity. insanity. But we're also seeing that happen in real time with Joy Boy's Hockey because Joy Boy's Hockey actually negged the abilities of the elders. Whether they're power users or not, does that really matter if hockey can transcend all things? It wouldn't matter because it's even transcending itself. Hockey's even transcending itself, bro. That, woo. So what we see with the volume four billion with Shanks is being validated in some way through Joy Boys hockey, being able to actually shut down the powers of the elders. Again, fruits or not, doesn't matter because it's all things categorically all things and this goes extra for the elders because the elders themselves have shown the ability of conqueror's hockey conqueror's hockey is transcending its own subcategory jesus the five elders i would say all of them have conqueror's hockey all of them have potential voice of all things telepathy with each other some folks even argue that the magic circle the teleportation circle is also a hockey ability of some kind. Is it actually mana and when God in Leviosa? Maybe, I my doubts, but does it matter? All things. Hockey transcends all things, even itself. 
And even though the elders had their own conquerors hockey, likely in fusion too, doesn't matter. Cause you have to be at a joy boy level. You have to be at a transcendence level of conquerors hockey. The only other person that we've seen in a similar light, it is what it is, is Shanks. Because Shanks did do the same thing to Green Bull in chapter 1055. And you can see in the anime version of it particularly, where he was in that giant group form, and then he powers down to regular form because of the hockey Wi-Fi of Shanks. And you can see in the anime particularly, where it's almost like a straight jacket around Green Bull, where the hockey of Shanks wraps around Green Bull, and then it forces Green Bull to like power down and he has to put his hands up. Hands up, don't shoot. Wait, Green Bull, I thought that prejudice breeds stability. No, no, please, oh, oh. Hands up, don't shoot. Oh, <laughs> when the tables turn, when the red hair wonder arrives, most death. Most, most death, Green Bull, we see you, we see you. We can see how this hockey type, this sort of transcendence hockey is way too strong. For example, when we see Goldie Roger and Whitebeard fight, we only see them trading blows. And in anime, it's just hockey one for one. But I've always wondered, hold on, why didn't Whitebeard use his powers? He has a whole ability set to use, right? Obviously, we didn't see the entire fight. So maybe at some point, he did start to fling off these quake punches. Fair enough. But let's assume for the time being, for argument's sake, he didn't. Well, if Goldie Roger was at that transcendence level, and he probably was, maybe he couldn't. Maybe Whitebeard couldn't use... Ooh. Just thinking about it is giving me a cramp right now. Oh my God. If it's possible that even someone like Whitebeard was unable to use his abilities because Goldie Rogers conquers hockey would completely shut down his power. So he said, I'm gonna go hockey for hockey instead of wasting my time using my different powers. Think about Garp versus Kuzan, Aokiji. When he was in the ice ball, Garp broke out easy peasy. And you would argue, at least I would argue, that it's threefold. Number one, his insane physique. Number two, arm at hockey for added defense. But then number three, conquerors hockey coating on his body to mitigate some of the effects of Kuzan's ability. In some way, Garp's hockey was overwhelming Kuzan's frost ability. Someone like Goldie Roger, at his theoretical transcendence level of hockey, would just negate it flat out. It wouldn't even work. The application of a core mechanic of arm and hockey being put on Conqueror's hockey, already seeing that synergy of arm and hockey and Conqueror's hockey via Conqueror's hockey infusion over arm and hockey, but then not only suppressing fruit powers, but powers as a whole, even suppressing other hockey abilities. If the voice of all things is a hockey ability, could you stop that? Could you actually shut down telepathy with strong enough conquerors hockey? Yeah, like you see this, man? <laughs> this is scary. This is scary. This is very scary business, man. And the scariest thought by far is if this is the way you can actually neg immortality. Immortality, in some sense, is an ability. This transcendence conquerors hockey is the ability crusher. If a meth was still active and he attacked Jay Garcia Saturn, who was the only elder left on the island, and the rest got teleported away back to the Holy Land, would Jay Garcia Saturn at that point in time take genuine, earnest, real damage, even though he's an immortal? Yo. Yo. Yo, this is scary stuff. When you think about it in the future, there's a good chance that the Struts are going to run into the Elders again. But by then, they'll be stronger, a lot stronger. Particularly Luffy. And Luffy's affinity for hockey, according to Chir Oda, is in fact Conqueror's hockey. So a betting man is gonna say that Luffy is going to achieve in the future that same level of that transcendence OD, oh my God, what the F, Hockey. And when you combine that with gear five, I mean, it's nasty work. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 God, man. It's just brutal. It's nasty. It's ferocious. It's freaky. But old, I think, is setting this up now. He is setting this up now. We need more insight on this one for sure in the future. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this tremendously. I think, I think it's going to be fire. Absolute fire, bro. You have, let's say, a three way fight between uh, Luffy, Blackbeard, and Shanks. 
everyone is coming in with something busted. Luffy, Gear 5, crazy madness stuff. Blackbeard, Yami Yami, and the Gura Gura. Oh yeah, busted stuff. Shanks, transcendence, baby. Transcendence hockey, even compared to that of Joy Boys. That's crazy. What? Everyone's coming into the playing field, even Buggy with some causality shenanigan nonsense. <laughs> but everyone is coming into the playing field Come the end game, end game, the race for the One Piece treasure with something phenomenally busted, broken, nuts. Oh man, it's gonna be a good time. You know how long I've been waiting for this? Yeah. Ooh, I'm about to make a name for myself here. Yeah. It's gonna be a good time. I do wonder if there are other unique levels in armament and observation hockey as well. Like again, the voice of all things could be like the peak of observation hockey uh arm hockey i'm not too sure what that would be exactly maybe it involves black blades who knows but all i'm trying to say is this hockey type not confirmed but the signs are clearly there kaido wasn't being facetious he wasn't joking he was being very literal and very earnest about that the bar for what hockey can do has risen it's undeniable and its potential is frightening so let me know your stance on the video subject at hand if you enjoyed the video, of course, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell to join the notification squad. I'm gonna catch you guys and gals on the flip side. See you, bye bye.